So the unreasonable dislikes that I described before, the sutra actually continues on to say, will be caused by experiences of the past that were painful or unpleasant. Mm. So we go back to, like you said, this whole history of parents and upbringing and all this, um, this, you know, patterning. There's nothing negative or bad inside of us. It's just a patterning of either resistance or contracting or protecting ourselves, you know, like that whole mm. defense mechanism that arises for most people at some point when it's difficult is limit our expansion into the world a little bit. That yeah. way we won't be at, at such risk right. for pain. And welcome to Curious Ones Podcast by Andara. I'm Yael Ginsberg, the host of the podcast, a yoga and meditation teacher and philosophy lover. Each week you will hear eye-opening interviews with the different teachers of the Andara Yoga Institute located in beautiful Baja, Mexico, along with other teachers that pass through here. This life-changing knowledge shared through authentic, heartfelt communication will help you live a happier, more fulfilled, and connected life. Let's dive in. Today, I have the lovely Christopher Perkins back on the podcast, episode number five. <laughs> For those who don't know Christopher yet, definitely check out the previous podcast episodes with him. They're incredible. I'll introduce him. He is the co-founder of Yandara that was founded about 20 years ago. So they've been doing this a while. Christopher has trained many generations of teachers over the years, doing many, many trainings. And his personal studies have been through different philosophies and practices of awareness, including yoga, qigong, vision quest, vipassana, Tibetan Buddhist meditation, and much more. So welcome to the podcast, Christopher. Thank you. Thank you for having me back. Um, it's a pleasure to see you. It's nice. You yeah. too. Well, yeah. <laughs> we yeah. had lunch together. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> but this is a different kind of space. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. So. Yeah. What's, today. What's, uh, what's on the on the <laughs> roster for today? Just the light subjects <laughs> of uh, yeah. family dynamics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right exactly okay. um i personally wanted to speak about this because mm. i have to say i find this maybe the most challenging area of my life um i can just share shortly that my family is very complicated <laughs> my father has mental illness issues my mother lives in the u.s as my sister does as well yeah. um and i just find myself really struggling with this because there's so much love and we care for each other so much and yet we have these like disconnections and points where are we just misunderstand each other and yeah. everybody's stuck in their own stories and you know their own problems and their own things that they're dealing with that in a way it's hard to come together mm. and i find that i don't know if it's like this for everybody but i find that maybe we allow ourselves to act in a different way with our family than we do with our friends and that of course brings its own sets of, yeah. <laughs> of challenges with it yeah. so i would mm. love to hear you speak about this <laughs> so would i <laughs> thank you for sharing that it's a vulnerable and uh, important thing to start with that we all have the complexity of what's called family yeah. and you know whether or not our family members are still living or they've passed um, they're part of us and we are part of them and so there's that innate connection that's something very sacred you mentioned love and i think obviously um as yogis you might call it we intend to grow from experiences and we want to be conscious and to be a student receptive to those interactions that are challenging um, although 
when it comes to family, often the gloves come off and it just gets weird, you know, like yeah. where do the practices go? Where does the mindfulness exactly. go? Exactly. You can it? be like the most evolved and relaxed person. And then once you yeah. meet your family, like everything's Everything. out the window. <laughs> totally. <laughs> You're back to the old patterns of yeah. like being a 10 year old. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. 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 So, um, you know, my, uh, my teacher, um, Darshan Singh, when I was growing up, he had a lot of reverence for his dad. His dad was his teacher, his mm -hmm. spiritual teacher. And your father's teacher as well. And my father's teacher, exactly. <laughs> so it's kind of an interesting generational uh, mm -hmm. guru, uh, disciple interaction there. And what I remember was he would often speak about his father, not as his father actually at all, but just mm -hmm. as his teacher. Oh, it really? was a very, yeah, it was a very powerful, very interesting dynamic, which landed, you know, for me as, okay, to be a student of life means to see everyone as my teacher mm -hmm. and to work in a concerted way, you know, like a yeah. consistent way, even around our family members, of course, becomes a challenge. So as you mentioned, that's where the rubber meets the road mm -hmm. big time. Like that's really the challenge. Um, so family uh, as he would put it my teacher would Dashan Singh would often say like welcome brothers and sisters you know meaning family doesn't just end at the bloodline it doesn't just stop uh, where the genetics uh, leave off mm -hmm. so in order for us to make sense of this level of receptivity I think it can be very valuable to see each and every person as a brother as a sister and then everyone who teaches us as our teacher, you know, everyone who brings up stuff, regardless of there's blood there, they are guru. Which is everybody. <laughs> Which is everybody, for <laughs> sure. Mostly this, <laughs> the <gasps> parents, brothers, sisters, mm -hmm. you know, the the close family members. Mm -hmm. uh, the, this is the massive challenge that I think pretty much everyone who has, you know, a human life will come up against at some point is it their practices do get tested around the family so Definitely. you're not alone yeah and also like all our wounds in a way i feel like yeah. psychology <laughs> always connected like what did our parents do yeah, or totally, not do totally <laughs> and you know and so yeah exactly and in the yoga sutras it talks about that how we have um what are called unreasonable dislikes mm. <laughs> so we have unreasonable pushes against the things that will cause us discomfort so uh, in that we can see that our family members will become some of our most potent teachers obviously the inner child work that i've mentioned in a previous podcast episode becomes one episode one the foundation <laughs> how do we make it through this world and still become receptive mm -hmm. you know because this world is tough um, but if we can receive each of our family members as a reflection little by little uh, it doesn't take it doesn't take um, uh, it doesn't take very much for us to realize that there's a teaching there if we remember that everyone is our brother and sister, everyone's our family. So we can kind of little by little let go of the idea that okay, we're different with our family. We are, of course. I'm not suggesting that we aren't. We are. And yet, if we can start practicing as though everyone is our family, then when we come with our family, we can then feel a little bit more like they're just like anybody else. Mm. Everyone is my family. Here's another person that happens to be more triggering. They're still part of my family. I'm still practicing the same practices. But I mean, I'm trying to like imagine that in my mind, but the thing is like with anybody who's not my blood family, it's so easy to say like, okay, this person and I don't vibe together. Sure. I guess it's better that we stay a little bit of a distance from each other, <laughs> yeah. but you can't do that with your family. Right, exactly. So as I mentioned, if you can see them as your family, the people that you can say, oh, I don't want to spend so much time, then we'll even start to reduce that push to say, I don't want to be around them, we don't jive. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So if we see them also as our family, meaning we still open to them as an intrinsic part of our life, mm. that they are inextricably connected to us and we're inextricably mm. connected to them in, a, in an interdependent way. They're going to be a much easier topic of study, you know, in terms of reflections for us than our actual blood parents, but we can start with them, with the people that are, like you said, 
easier to dismiss. But, but what if they're your brother? Mm. In your mind, what if they're your sister and you don't have that same convenience that you described as just dismissing them as, ah, I don't like them, so next, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Swipe left or whatever, you know? <laughs> Like, I get it, but this is how, it, this is what I mean. Yeah. So if you start with them as your sister, mm -hmm. that we, we don't have, the, you know, the luxury of dismissing them anymore, that they are also. Yeah, definitely. If, so, wow. So I it's feel easy. So it's an easy, what I mean is that's, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's where we practice. Yeah. And then when we get with our real bloodline, ah. then we have much more practice. That's interesting because I think you're saying like start with the easy thing, something mm -hmm. that you're less emotionally attached to. Yeah. And then you build up the strength and the tools to, to deal yes. with something that is more emotionally trigger exactly. triggering. Yeah. And I find like I'm thinking of a certain friend of mine. Okay. Like I find I find <laughs> like it's good right to have specific now, examples are good. Yeah, yeah. of course. Of course, because I'm trying everything you hear f always, you always find a way to relate it to yourself. And that's how you understand mm -hmm. what what somebody's talking about. That's what I did. Like. Exactly. <laughs> Anyways, I'm thinking about a specific friend of mine that right now, like I love her so, so much. But right now, like she's yeah. just getting on my nerves. Okay. She'll probably watch the podcast. And get, <laughs> <laughs> she'll know who she is, right? No, I'm so, not sure. <laughs> so let's say she's a sister, okay? Blood sister. Mm -hmm. You don't have the convenience of just dismissing her. I as, don't want to either. Right, okay, perfect. So yeah. now you've considered her as someone that you don't yeah. want to just say, I don't get along with her. Exactly. So this is a step in the into the realm that I'm describing as mm -hmm. seeing them as actually a part of your life, regardless of whether they bug you yeah. or not. Exactly. Not to say that you have to hang out with them all the time. <laughs> But what can we learn? <laughs> so the unreasonable dislikes that I described before, the sutra actually continues on to say, will be caused by experiences of the past that were painful or unpleasant. Mm. So we go back to, like you said, this whole history of parents and upbringing and all this, um, this you know, patterning. There's nothing negative or bad inside of us. It's just a patterning of either resistance or contracting or protecting ourselves, you know, like that whole mm. defense mechanism that arises for most people at some point when it's difficult is limit our expansion into the world a little bit. That yeah. way we won't be at, at such risk right. for pain, right. basically. So that is a contraction. It's normal. And it's helpful and it functions as a way to survive. And so we're grateful for that. Um, but also, so this woman or your friend that you're describing, she's been bothering you a bit. And, and there's going to be something that comes up in you that will hopefully with this practice lead back into the little version of ourselves that maybe wasn't as happy with the situation because it was disappointing. It was overwhelming. It was painful in some way. Mm -hmm. So now if she's a family member, and I love that you've decided you don't want to dismiss her. Mm -hmm. So now we're already halfway there. So you consider she's my sister, you know, so I'm going to work with, I'm going to work with this, you know. Yeah. And now she becomes the teacher. Mm. Hey, guru. Yeah. So she's, and this is a very, very humble, extremely humble path to see everyone as guru. Everyone is the one who can, guru means, is a gu, is darkness, and ru, removing. Mm -hmm. So every individual interaction that can bring light into, potentially into the deep, deep subconscious shadows, yeah. they are guru if we're receptive. Yeah, I think it's definitely the, the part of receptive because being willing to step out of the ego of like, she did this, she yeah. did that. I'm right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> We're always right. But just that step of yeah. being able to look at yourself <sighs> is like huge. Yeah. It's huge and unfortunately pretty rare. <laughs> it's very rare. Exactly. Yeah. Well, in a, a world that makes it very easy for us to just kind of project and blame and you know, we have social media that you can just disembody yeah. These incredibly projected, you know, reactions mm -hmm. online. And so people are used to just like flippantly 
you know, blaming, projecting, being right, making comments and things that maybe boost the ego for a little bit and da 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 da. And yeah. so I also think yeah. that like when, when we in culture now, people yeah. are so afraid to say the truth to each other that mm. even if like you come and tell your friend, like, what did she do to me? Listen, and like, you can't believe it. Most often, unless it's like a really good friend, they're just going to agree with you right. and not put the mirror and say like, okay, but maybe you did that. And you know, sure. Exactly. Yeah. It's very hard to find an honest person that's willing to, yeah, kind of confront us on those moments. Mm -hmm. And partly is the reason that we, the, the reason is because we don't bring the issue with a receptive desire to grow. We usually bring it, in a way that we just want to vent and get someone to back us up and affirm it, affirm our, yeah. our being right. Yeah. And you know, the way I look at this is there's an internal condition. Why is this even important to address this state of being bugged by someone? Or what would you say to be irritated? Like she's yeah. the, you know, the issue is not with them. The issue is a simple for me experience that I'm having internally. If I'm at, in, in a condition of dis-ease, you know, I'm like not, at, I'm not at peace. I'm not settled. I'm not feeling receptive and relaxed. I've got tightness. I've got frustration. Um, these are things that I have to live in and I'm the only one that has to live in it. So I'm the only one that I really have to be responsible for in regard to my inner world. Just me. So if I'm blaming somebody and getting frustrated, I'm basically in a powerless sort of, um, I like to call it the blame game, you know, the game that my mind plays that tries to lean or give my own power to somebody else to say, ah, they're the reason that I feel this way. Of course, we all know that it's not, well, hopefully we all know this, <laughs> but it, it's not very practical because an analogy that I love is like when you light yourself on fire, get frustrated. Mm -hmm. It's like you feel hot and, and unsettled and like almost like not comfortable in the skin. If you get angry at somebody, I'm talking about, you know, pissed off and frustrated and everything that comes along with they're the problem. And I want to make sure that they change. Like they shouldn't act like that. They yeah. shouldn't be like that. They shouldn't have said that. They shouldn't have done those things. Yeah. These also are all, like our family members. Totally. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So internally, which is where we have to live, or we live in our head and fantasize to avoid that mm -hmm. or get distracted by whatever amount of entertainment that's at our fingertips 24 7. so we have options we don't have to yeah. live in our body or dissociate yeah totally all yeah. kinds of options get all lost in whatever yeah but if we do want to have integration if we do want to live in our best version of humanity and be a beacon for others mm -hmm. then it comes down to how much of our light uh, is being smoked out by the fire that I'm mm -hmm. kind of lit inside. Mm -hmm. And that is because I'm arguing that friction is created by arguing with reality, mm -hmm. which is that he shouldn't have said that. She shouldn't act like that. Mm -hmm. She shouldn't have done those things because dot, dot, dot. That's me arguing with the, the fundamental truth of the reality that she did do it. Right. And that's going to cause friction inside, which causes heat, which causes flames, which causes smoke. My light is dimmed. <laughs> There's nothing left. Yeah. So we're suffering. We're just suffering. Yeah. yeah. And so the analogy is I'm lighting myself on fire and hoping that the other person gets annoyed by the smoke, <laughs> which is pretty much all we're doing. Yeah. And then in the meantime, we look like kind of an idiot because... You know, we're lost. So, yeah. meaning we don't, there's no power here. There's nothing. I'm not actually living in my integrity. Yeah. So, the first thing that you're saying is we have to find the way to accept that this is a situation. Exactly. They're that way. I'm this way. This is the interaction. Yeah. First, we accept it. As it is. Exactly. So, the fact is, this is what happened. Yeah. I don't necessarily have to agree. We don't have to add any value on it. We're just recognizing the fact is, I feel something and I observe something. Mm -hmm. I can have lots of thoughts about it and that's where the fire starts. Right. But the fact is, I observe something and I feel something. That's all I know. Right. So then we can start there. Then what? <laughs> then we have a sensation. Ooh, the sensations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the sensations are the grounding part, the part that gets us below the neck, usually mm -hmm. like into the feeling. Mm -hmm. That's where we can encounter the tightness or the heat mm -hmm. or the whatever discomfort you wanna call it. Yeah. Um, which will be a familiar condition to us. Mm. We've decided that that's a good fallback position. And that would have happened many, many years ago. Mm. 
that would have happened when we were, you know, three, five, seven, whatever it is that uh, that condition became normalized. Mm -hmm. That that's how we should have uh, our, that's how we should have reactions to life is by doing yeah. this. In a way, it's like a pattern or mm -hmm. exactly yeah, habit. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's just a pattern. It's nothing wrong or bad or negative or evil or dark. It's literally just. A habit that works at some point for us to get through. Yeah, so, which means that if it's something that's familiar in a habit, then once we learn how it how it feels, we can yes. recognize it more easily when it comes next. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. There's a whole view on this. For me, it's the intelligence of the subconscious. Mm. The subconscious knows that there's an un resolved or unintegrated part of my Boy, own. Boy, does it know. It knows. <laughs> so that person you're talking about, uh, she has been so delicately chosen by your subconscious to be your friend mm. because your subconscious knew that at some point she would begin to manifest things that would help you find this original feeling, whatever it is. So it can be mended so that the, the gap can be lessened and we can mm -hmm. gain more relationship internally. So this is... The wisdom coming up. Okay, yeah. so thank goodness we met this person. <laughs> thank goodness. <laughs> thank goodness. They're the best teacher. <laughs> um, and all of this has to do with mindfulness and has to do with being in our body, doing yoga mm -hmm. practice, postures to help ground our awareness in our body before we get triggered. That'll set us up for success. Mm -hmm. That way we're not so far from that little bit of ember that starts to get flamed or fanned into a flame. So it's not a raging bonfire by the time we actually get to it that we can get it quickly and i'll recognize it before it becomes us saying something that we don't actually mean or it's something yeah. we regret so this being in the body from posture practice or from any embodiment movement um, sets us up for an observer role rather than a kind of a damage control catching like kind of arriving home when the fire is already blazing yeah or being in such a reactive state that you can't even catch up with it yeah totally can't. yeah mm -hmm. can't. it's already too hot to go in yeah. and even try to put it out kind of yeah. thing like i need help so at that point then there's lots of techniques breath practices doing uh, some kind of visualization getting away from the person lots of specific techniques that can de-escalate our internal reaction okay um for example i love cross lateral stimulation of the body so this is from the emdr model of um, eye movement mm -hmm. desensitization so um emdr eye movement desensitization response or something like that <laughs> okay mm -hmm. the point is is that when we look left and look right or touch and touch or extend and extend or mm. turn and turn all of this is stimulating left and right okay. sides of the body which crosses the left and right brain hemisphere so it helps us to generate an integrated approach to the emotion rather How? than a, by stimulating the left and right brain hemispheres consist consecutively mm -hmm. we start to so so left brain is the feel so, sorry left brain is the um the seeing clearly it's like logic it's being able to gain a perspective mm -hmm. on what's happening and not get involved basically the logic uh, the right brain is the creative it's the feeling it's the emotional it's responsible for how to kind of um, allow rather than control mm -hmm. so we need both to process efficiently as adults we need to see it for what it is and we also have the kind of requirement internally to let it move mm -hmm. within us yeah but when we're just in the movement and we've identified with only the movement it can be like being lost at sea and when we're in the other side where we're only logic based and we can't actually feel anything but we can create philosophies or we can make a a, a view of it that keeps us from being affected this can be called spiritual bypass as well where we use a philosophical saying or something like oh it's all good anyway or you know what they have their own story it's nothing to do with me mm. things like that mm -hmm. these are spiritual oh my bypass God, that i hate when people say that <laughs> It's very common though, and it's a great That's start. That's yours. Exactly. Don't involve me. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. well, you, you brought it up. <laughs> it's all exactly. It's, it's all integrated. <laughs> so, if you, so if you ever, and they feel like so superior that they're like, it's yours. <laughs> exactly. The ego loves it. 
Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm much better than you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So that is a really interesting and common way to avoid evolution mm. is to use either one or the other. Being completely overwhelmed and just blubbering around in the emotions, swimming, you know, not even know which way is up, not even knowing which way is downstream, upstream, just flailing around, mm -hmm. just, you know, just overwhelmed with emotion versus uh, disassociative kind of spiritual bypass or philosophizing. Mm -hmm. Neither of them have ultimately what we're looking for, which is integration. Mm. So the technique that I was talking about is simply to stimulate the left and the right side of the body consecutively for a minute, hmm. for example. So while this, you're doing like thoughts or you're thinking about something or focusing, you're talking about something. So focusing on the breath. This is, so we talked about different degrees kind of of being triggered. You know, when you're really overwhelmed, that's when I said, step away, oh, okay. you know, get some space, yeah. uh, do something mm. that gets your body integrating left and right brain hemispheres. Okay. So one of the most effective ways I've ever found is either crossing the arms and touching. So one, two, and I'm doing my best just to feel that. <sighs> Focus on it until I feel it and then touch. Touching like, like the shoulder of yep. the opposite arm. Exactly, mm -hmm. or touching one leg, making sure that both are never touching at the same time. Want to mm. touch one space and then touch the other one. As soon as I feel the sensation, the actual engagement of the mind in that presence of sensation, then I release. As soon as I feel it, okay, release. Mm -hmm. As soon as I feel it, okay, release. And basically, this is like a little ping pong back and forth, left brain, right brain, perspective and integration. It's already built into the yoga practices, um, like right. for example, alternate nostril breathing, if you've done Nadi Shodhana. Mm -hmm. So these are also really effective at making sure that we're starting from that foundation of balance so we can process it in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. That we can basically see it for what it is as well as allow it to move and release whatever tensions have been accumulated around it. So just to make sure that I understand, when we stimulate right and left side, yes. it actually allows for integration yes integration of, <laughs> of what of left and right brain hemisphere activity oh like to balance the polarities yes okay exactly and that balance of polarity gives us a healthier mm -hmm. approach to mm -hmm. whatever is arising so that we're not either avoiding it and disassociating or getting lost in it mm -hmm. and just re-traumatizing ourselves or just playing out a role, you know, like a, identifying as the one who's a victim. And that, because mm. as a child, we were a victim. You see, that's valid for the child. It's legitimate. As an adult, unfortunately, it's not really like that. Usually 99.9% of the time, we are just playing the victim actually mm -hmm. we're identified with the one who was a victim of circumstances uh, as adults we have the opportunity to evolve yeah to see beyond that and to unravel some of the patterns that aren't serving us and that's yeah. that's how i would hope that your parents can become included in that practice that you've now started to apply it to your friend you know you're starting to see okay maybe it wasn't just her i'm also <laughs> being triggered Mm. Yeah, takes no definitely for for me it's yes. obvious that it's like sure. it's a it's a combination of both hey i'm quickly interrupting the episode to extend an invitation if you are interested in deepening into any of the subjects we talk about on the podcast we offer many different experiences on our beautiful grounds here in baja mexico from nine day modules such as sound healing and yoga nidra to breath and meditation as well as two or 300 hour yoga teacher trainings and many different shorter retreats. Check out our website, yandara.com to see all the information about the different experiences. Let's get back to the episode. Let's continue with the steps because we, yes. we said, first of all, it's awareness, yes. accepting that it is what it is. Second is becoming aware of the sensations in the body, right? Mm -hmm. Because we kind of went off on the, when you're overwhelmed by sensation. Yeah, exactly. So now once we've arrived in the body, we've maybe done some grounding techniques. We've given ourselves time to breathe top, you know, top down 10 to zero or whatever like that. That's given us some space. Um, then it has to do with letting the thoughts 
also be in this space, but in a healthy mm -hmm. way. So the fact is that it's happened. We've established that. This person said this. I feel this. Groundwork is set. We know what's going on. The second part is then to let that become in a tantric way. Tantra means yes to everything because mm -hmm. I'm here to evolve. So everything that has some fuel in it, I want to use it. Mm -hmm. So this has evolution. Exactly. So if this has some fuel, which means energy, if it has some energy involved in it, mm -hmm. then I've got a great opportunity here, like really special that I can use that in order to either gain more deep awareness or to move something that hasn't moved in a while. Um, so for the next step to include thought is to give it an emotion, mm -hmm. give it clear labels. So you used the term frustrated or no, annoyed. I think bugged me. Oh, bugged you. Yeah. <laughs> Bugging. Okay. So that's great. So you're bugged by it. <laughs> so if you let yourself in this moment, if you want to see that there is another emotion is maybe clearer than just being bugged. If you let it be really truthful, if you're not being yogic at all. Oh, let's see. Let's see. She's doing her thing. You know what I mean? She's just playing the perfect role. And she does it again. I don't know if she's going to listen to this. <laughs> well, this is her opportunity as well to learn. You know, she might get triggered by what you're saying, but that's her work. If she wants... <laughs> you want to burn me with my friend? <laughs> it's not about her. <laughs> you see, that's the beauty of this, is that she's played the perfect role yeah. in your life. And we can... Well, at you're this right, it's not... Yeah, it's not even about her. So yeah. this is hopefully not going to be offensive, rather the opposite. She'll start to see you as so self-actualized. -actual you can see that you're the one in control of your own destiny rather than blaming her. Mm -hmm. That's a very safe person to be around, someone who knows that they are in control of what they are going to uh, investigate. You're choosing. I felt that she wasn't truthful about something. Okay. Perfect. And how'd that make you feel that someone wasn't truthful or that you thought she wasn't truthful? I hate when people lie to me. Okay. That's hate. Hate. That's really, it's really a strong word. I, I don't like no, using it. It's but great. It's perfect because it's truthful. Mm -hmm. We start with the truth of what our experience is. There are many layers of truth. Mm -hmm. The first layer is she shouldn't have lied or da 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 da. The second layer is I feel. I hate it. I feel <laughs> I can't stand I can't when stand. people lie to me. Great. So then right beneath yeah. that, there's going to be another layer of truth that what? More? Oh, yeah. Oh, we're just getting <laughs> started here. Uh -huh. So because there's a certain result to being lied to mm. that when you needed people to be honest, they weren't. What does that leave you with? I feel like it's kind of underestimating me. Okay, so you feel underestimated, disrespected even? Or I'm, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but like, okay, that they don't believe you can handle the truth, mm -hmm. maybe. Mm -hmm. Disrespectful, actually, to mm -hmm. say that you can't handle the truth. Mm -hmm. You're incapable of processing. In a way, yeah. But tell me if I'm not, you know, saying something that feels truthful. Mm -hmm. Basically, <laughs> them deciding whether or not you can handle <laughs> something. That's, that's, you know, that's a brazen thing to do, isn't it? To someone else to decide that you can't handle the truth. So how does that make you feel that someone else doesn't value your own capacity to, to process things, your own ability to deal with things? They don't see it. How does that feel? It's hard for me to even put the words on, onto it. You can use shape and size. Like, do you feel bigger, like expanded? And mm. Do you feel small? No, I definitely feel small. Okay. That's a great start. Mm. You know, you're, you're getting where the energy is going. It's getting smaller, tighter, trying to create more safety yeah, for yourself. Yeah. Um, and perhaps even questioning whether or not you are worthy of that truth at the end of the day. If you're, mm -hmm. Or uh, even valued. Valued. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So right there, your value is put under a question. Your basic worth. Wow, all of that. Yeah. <laughs> all in that one decision that someone in their best effort to protect you or to keep you from being hurt or whatever made you feel that way inadvertently. Yes. 
and yet that's what that's the fact is that yeah. you feel that so mm -hmm. this isn't about this person they're your friend now this is just she's reminding you of that when it happened much much yes ex actually further that's back. exactly right okay <laughs> So that version of yourself that was trying to establish their own self-worth, their own value, was looking to the environment for clues. How much value do I have in this world? What is my actual worth in this world that I've been born into? And the messages are coming all the time. And if one of them comes in such a way that starts to chip away at it directly as your own value, it's going to leave a mark. It's going to leave a question mark. And that is going to lead you to questioning your own self-worth. So if she in this modern day says something or doesn't say something that brings that up, now we have the juice. There's the energy. Mm. Energy is that feeling of, so energy gets stuck when things get smaller and tighter. It's just like, if you think about uh, a water line where flow, uh, like a channel is really important. So if you wanna get all the water to the house, the tube has to be big enough. So if the tube all of a sudden gets really small, the energy starts to, the, the amount of flow, the amount of water to the house obviously drops a lot. But what happens behind that? Mm, pressure. Pressure, yeah. Exactly. And that's a buildup of potential energy. That is potential energy that's being blocked. Mm -hmm. So within us, in that moment, we've generated a resistance to the flow of universal energy. Wow. And we're living in a subconscious condition of limitation based on that. Wow, that's so true. Like, I find that that's kind of the reason why your cat is like basking in the sun. She looks adorable. <laughs> that's flow. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. She's like, I love this. <laughs> Oh Wait, but that was like a, a light bulb moment for me because yeah. would you say that that's the distance between what we want our life to be and what it actually is? Yes. Mm. And we're just simply living within our own belief system based on that aperture of flow state. Mm -hmm. So that's a belief system that I'm only worth X percent of what I am. That's all. Mm -hmm. And that was established at, a, at an age when beliefs were being formed. So luckily your subconscious knows that that's not true. You're, you're worth much more, <laughs> so much more than that particular situation led you to believe. So now we're able to bring it up to the surface by finding this lovely friend of yours. Thank you. <laughs> and that- We love you. <laughs> we love you and thank you, yeah, for showing thank up in you. her life. <laughs> Because otherwise, you, you know, it's very hard to find these subconscious yeah. things. What a change of thought instead of like pushing against it and blaming them and pushing them away and finding what's wrong in them. <sighs> changing it to gratitude of thank you for coming to my life and yes. allowing me the opportunity to to see sides of myself mm -hmm. that I haven't seen before. Yeah. So good. Mm. And so we can wiggle a little bit in those moments of like, oh, wait, you mean there's a new set of clothes? You know, there's a new container. There's a new aperture, a new yeah. size, a new caliber of mental, emotional, spiritual identity. Mm -hmm. And that's available to us when we acknowledge and thank the part of ourself that had to choose an identity that was smaller. Mm because it was doing that out of self-preservation. It had to normalize the situation. It had to say, well, okay, then this is how it is so that I can get on with my life. Because if it was really gonna fight against that, it would just be too painful. Mm -hmm. Our consciousness. Yes, exactly. We're getting the message that you don't deserve or you don't, you're not worthy of you don't, you can't handle the truth. You don't, um, whatever it is, you know, you're, you're not worth, me expressing or having to explain the truth or whatever it is, all those messages, especially if they're repeated, then at some point, for sure, we're going to say, this is just how it is. So let's just get on with it. I suck. Fine. Let's just do this life. <laughs> you, do you know what I mean? Like that's the belief that sets in. And all of a sudden, for us to survive, to go to school, <laughs> to wake up every morning, we have to create a belief structure that we start to live in according to that. Mm -hmm. And then we can survive and 
brush our teeth and do our homework and be social or whatever we need to do mm -hmm. because we've normalized it. Yeah. So now that we're adults yes, and we're choosing to live life consciously right. in evolution, yes. What is the, what is the next step? <laughs> next step. Oh my gosh. So I, once again, you know, meditation, learning the ability that we have to concentrate, to be internally oriented rather than just externally towards her or towards him. That's a huge one. Recognizing that the internal world is as valuable, if not more valuable for us. Yeah. So um, simple practices like closing the eyes and choosing breath awareness to use downward focus, attention, to create a container or a context of awareness. Basically, mm -hmm. like it's like an empty refrigerator, kind of like you open it up and there's just space ready to put the nourishment, you know, to store the good stuff. And, mm -hmm. that, and that, that space is so valuable because it's what will retain the nutrients. It'll keep it you know, well um, prepared for us when we need it. And so when we look internally and we can see and recognize a space inside, it's a big space. It's like industrial fridge, you know, like <laughs> where we put all the good stuff. That's when we can start to apply positive or bring in the good stuff, meaning the love, the acceptance, the embrace, the respect into this inner world. And that's like bringing, you know, the water flow back into the house or bringing the, the, the big tube from the fire hydrant to put mm -hmm. out the fire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if we're going to refer back to the fire that Enlar we've started. Enlarging the tube. Exactly. Getting <laughs> upgrades, you know, just upgrading the flow state. Exactly. So and that would be like inner child work. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that'll come from meditating on that space. And then for, for that, that example that you gave, it would be to check and see, well, what would that person, that little person actually really need to counter that belief? Mm -hmm. So if the belief was put on the table and saying, you know, to that, we're sitting, you know, a little me, big me sitting on the table, little, little me says, but I'm not worthy of, you know, I don't deserve anything else. And then I'm looking at it and investigating it to see, is that true? Is this how I feel about that kid? When I look at that little girl, when you look across the table and she's put the belief like a set of cards out on the table, says, I am not worthy of love. I'm not worthy of the truth. Mm -hmm. Then you see beyond the cards and what do you see? Is that true? I have to tell you that for me, something that, I mean, when you give me that image, of course, I, I see this little girl and she's worthy of everything and she's beautiful and I just want to tell her that. Oh, you, say, um, you say, of course. <laughs> but that's not always the case. Okay, it can be yeah. a revolutionary moment of recognition. Mm -hmm. Well, it will be revolutionary if it's if it's sincere in the moment. I don't want to interrupt yeah. you. Go ahead. Yes. No, no, you, you're right. It is an important point. Like this is, of course, just my experience. Like for me, that's that's um, for me that's like of course. Of course, I want to hug this girl. I want to okay. tell her that she's perfect and that she deserves mm. the world. Like I would say to anybody else. Exactly. You know, like it's, so, it's harder to say it to our grown-up selves, obviously. Yeah. Well, our grown-up selves don't need to hear it. Our grown-ups... do they? Nope. So how do you feel? Because where I'm going to is like affirmations. Yeah. How do you feel about that? <sighs> they're not for us. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't believe that they're for... I believe that they are for the inner child. And mm -hmm. that if we can create a platform, like if we can create a container for that little inner child, that, that they're actually, when I say inner child, I just mean our innocence, our own vulnerability, our own original receptivity that was so mm -hmm. spongy that anything that came at them yeah. basically went in. And what we're literally talking about is neural pathways created in exactly. our brain. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. And those are associated with hormonal responses in the body and we become patterned to respond to the to those thought waves or those particular patterns with the same hormonal response and yeah. we start to link them together and that becomes yeah. like an addictive cycle. So for this, the affirmation would be, I'm worthy of what? <laughs> the truth? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I mean, or respect, you know, I'm worthy of respect. I'm worthy of, so you can sit there for a moment and see what would make sense. To, and, yeah. And, and let that, okay, try it for yourself. We can actually do it right now. You want to do it right now? Yeah. All of us together? All of us together. <laughs> so choose your, 
affirmation. What do you need to hear? And we're going to try it on ourselves as an adult and then try to land. We can even kind of internally lower ourselves down and offer it to a child and see which it makes more sense. Okay. So, we'll, and we'll do this <laughs> okay. both ways a couple, you know, we'll check it out and see. Okay. okay. So, I want you to repeat your affirmation. We can all do we this. Just find one first. Yeah. Well, what do you struggle with? <laughs> we all struggle should i start the list yeah exactly <laughs> for the theme of today <laughs> yeah uh to be respected okay i am worthy of respect mm -hmm. i am respectful or i'm worthy of respect does that make a feeling come up inside of you yeah okay so i deserve respect or i, I wouldn't say deserve i uh, uh, yeah <laughs> i'm worthy of respect yeah Okay, now I want you to be really clear and say that to your adult self. I am worthy of respect. And really feel it. I am worthy of respect. I'm worthy of respect. It's not quite. Okay. Now I invite you to close your eyes. Open your heart to an, a sense of or an image of a girl that doesn't know this, actually. She doesn't know whether she's actually worthy of of respect. I want you to let that same sentiment extend whenever you're feeling it's natural with your heart. Mm, Is she worthy? That hit differently. Okay. Interesting. And how important was that to her compared to the previous version to your adult self? It was almost kind of ridiculous to say it to my adult self. Yes. Do you know why? <laughs> And to the kid, it was like, I almost ha I got tears in my eyes. Yeah. Wow, interesting. So using the affirmation is very important when you know how. Mm. Then it has a lasting condition inside of you rather than just spinning the wheels mm. and trying to. Wow, that's yeah. such a new and interesting perspective that I haven't heard before. And I, I spend a lot of time studying this self-development world. Yeah. Interesting. Well, thank you for demonstrating how important that distinction is. <laughs> yes. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> so when we take this opportunity with her, mm -hmm. um, it's like feeding a child with the nourishing truth mm. that she deserves. So you're giving her now what she wasn't sure that she deserved. Can you feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So how would, so if you close your eyes for a moment, just one more time, as though it's real, we can all do this, allow the softness of the body and heart to create space that that message or that clear affirmation lands in the space. How significant is that for her to feel that you believe it when you say it? Do you believe it when you say it? I do. Okay. Good. So now, if you imagine this other girl who's probably watching the video. My BFF. Listening. Yeah, your BFF. <laughs> how do you feel when you think about her and what she may or may not have said um, that you called like an untruth or something that wasn't mm -hmm. uh, feeling respectful? But now that you have the understanding that you do deserve the truth, how do you feel? Given the fact that she said that, how do you feel about her now? Or didn't say that. Bring the little girl with you now. She's here. Um, you know what? It feels like it doesn't affect me as deeply as before bingo but well of course you've just practiced for two <laughs> you've practiced it twice yes yeah. go ahead but like cognitively i'm i'm still like yeah but you shouldn't have done it <laughs> of course yeah because you have simply scratched the surface as to the depth of how powerful your inner relationship is you've just touched you've just gained 
one or two percent of trust between you and that little girl. So you've gotten one or two percent of your strength and power back. Mm -hmm. And that's what you've been able to experience. That little bit of less affected, mm -hmm. that's enough. All we need is one percent to know yeah. that you've, what, you, what you've just done is working. So just keep doing it. Mm -hmm. And you're going to gain so much more. You can, at some point, you'll just be like, Poof, she's perfect. Like she's absolutely perfect. Thank you for that brilliant lie. <laughs> like it was so well crafted at just the right moment when I <laughs> didn't expect it, which was exactly <laughs> what I needed. Yes. Like, wow, not even, am I not affected? Yeah. I am so deeply affected in an mm -hmm. appropriate way to liberate me from my delusions <laughs> yes. of not being worthy of the truth. Okay, so now. Yes. I I'm with you. It's not something that happens just yeah. uh, one time. It's like a child. You know, you feed them at, <laughs> at 9 a.m. Would you get frustrated with, with them if they got hungry at 12 again? Yes. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> sure, you might get frustrated, but does there any, is there any logic behind getting frustrated? <laughs> no, no, of course not. Right, so I, it's, it's I a was joking. But, <laughs> so, I know, but it's, a, it's a relationship, not a Band-Aid. We're not trying to mm -hmm. fix. Yeah. We're just creating a relationship that's honest inside. So this kind of brings me to the second topic that I wanted to talk about, which is the communication side of things. Yes. Because, okay, so we realized... That it's internal, it's an opportunity for us to look inwards. Easy peasy. We really well, no, of course <laughs> not. But but I'm just kind of reviewing what yeah. we what we did until exactly. now. Exactly. So we learned to look inside, to be grateful for the situation that arise, and then to have this internal dialogue with just this space inside of us that is um vulnerable. Exactly. Innocent. Yes, exactly. Yeah, perfect. Now in what way can we communicate how we feel, how yeah. we want this relationship to move forward from that yeah. space? Of course. In a way that brings closeness and not separation. This is like the biggest ego death you're talking about. Yes. Like this is the death of the ego. So how do we get to this place? We walk the plank. <laughs> 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 you know, come, come to the edge <laughs> and take a leap of faith that they want the same exact thing. And mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, their efforts were within themselves the best that they could do. Um, and within ourselves, this is the best that we can do, regardless of how integrated we are with these practices, we can express where we are, where we're at. And it can start with an intention. It doesn't have to be a realization at all. It doesn't have to be a mastery of this reflective mind. You yeah, know. And I just want to mention quickly that we're talking about my friend, but sure, our original thought is like the family. family yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So you're approach is going to be different no matter you know whether it depends on where you are in your understanding of your own role and and the understanding of how precious they are that they've helped you to to find your place in this reawakening or this recalibrating of our aperture of our power mm -hmm. so your your response to them is going to depend on all of this um, there's no um, script though there are models for sure. Um, if you care about them enough, at some point you will want to include them in your process. Meaning, let them in to have a glimpse as to the struggles and challenges and difficulties and mm -hmm. successes that you have been involved in during the walk when you said, I need, I need to take some space. Every time I look at you, so this is coming back to radical honesty and nonviolent communication and things where you are very mindful to speak in ways that reveal rather than to convince. So revealing myself is very different than speaking to convince someone of one way or the other. Also, without any ideally need to change or demand them to fix anything 
even making suggestions or requests upon them probably won't end up the way that you want to to be. Mm -hmm. And I've heard a lot of people say, all I'm asking is for you to just dot, 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 dot. Okay? So there's no way to manipulate them to our own will? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it, yeah. Shoot. I know. You know, love... Uh, uh, <laughs> Love and attachment are, are distinguished in this very simple phrase where love is the wish for someone to be happy mm. and attachment is the wish for someone else to make me happy. Mm -hmm. So by me making demands on how they should behave, uh, even as subtle as yogically veiled requests, like <laughs> it would be a little bit more sort of conscious <laughs> of you. <laughs> You know, I'm on a spirit. I'm on a spiritual path. Maybe you can Learn meet. From me. Maybe you can meet me. <laughs> um, oh my god! Nothing more annoying <laughs> than that. Like I know that I might have, you know, a little bit more, um, sp like sort of spiritual awareness. <laughs> I'm laughing because I might have been in that of position. Of course. It's normal and natural to to our best like intentions try to get someone to come along with us when in fact they can't and they shouldn't try to come along with you because they are the guru. Their actions are designed by our own subconscious to act in according to what we need to liberate. So for us, Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I know. It's, oh my God. It's heavy. Whew. This is so humbling. This is so devastating to the ego. That's what I mean by the death of the ego. Wow. It's the end of the line. It's on my knees. Thank you for whew. truth. Thank you for showing up exactly as I need it. This is devastating to the ego that wants to manipulate the situation for them to make it easier for us to continue in our patterns so what do we say the truth <laughs> the truth is i am really trying to be free of my suffering and my struggle and my projection and my blame which i am blaming you i'm really working to try and create harmony i want I want to connect. I want to love. I want to be sharing why we originally were, you know, I, I want to make sense of, of this whole sort of delusion that I'm living in, which is that you're the problem. I want to make sense of this. I, I, I don't know how I need to go for a walk. Okay. I don't want to say anything that I will regret. Okay. That's stage one. <laughs> Just being honest. I have an intention. I'm not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> fine <laughs> at least they know where we're at that's what i mean by at some point if we care about them we will want to invite them into our process what i'm not doing is putting the onus on them putting that the onus putting the responsibility on them mm -hmm. now i can be really clear and i can say something like i keep having these thoughts that you shouldn't have lied to me and those thoughts are coming from a really deep place inside of me of disrespect from my own past and feeling like I wasn't respected. Okay. Or if I'm not there yet, I can say, you know what? I keep having these negative thoughts about you. I don't want to say them because I still believe them and I know that it's not healthy. I'll see you in about an hour. So you're not even saying like, you're not taking away their responsibility. I don't have to. You're just saying it's not even about whether you did it or not. Exactly. It's about what I'm going through in my own experience. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And just revealing that truth. I'm having a really hard time. I know there's a way that I can move through this. I just don't know what that is right now. And when I look at you, it brings up a lot of anger and frustration. So, I, you know, I just really think I need to go for a little walk. 
Okay, you've taken a walk, you're feeling zen. Got it. <laughs> I come back from my meditation, which we went over in my own space, mm. and I can say something like, um, you know, I'm, of course, I'm imagining, so I don't know what you would say, but it could be something like, hey, thanks for your patience earlier. Um, this has been really hard for me. I started out with a lot of frustration and project, you know, like, blaming you for my frustration and my hurt um do you want to know what i've been going through yes okay so i talked to this guy christopher who suggested that maybe i'm projecting stuff so that i can learn that maybe i'm getting frustrated with you because it's something i really want to heal subconsciously this pain or this mm -hmm. misunderstanding inside of me. And that's why this whole thing has come up because I need so it. So when I imagine saying something like that, yeah. I imagine that being interpreted in the situation as it's my fault. Okay. So we can get to perfect. So we can find another version of that. So we can say something like, um, a lot of stuff's been coming up for me. That stuff um, from before, uh, that I've ever met you or stuff from when I was younger. Um, it's really being triggered by uh, what you said about me the other day. Now, I do not have any interest in saying that it's your fault because I know that it, you're doing your best and I'm doing my best. I'm just Let's responding. Let's talk about that for a moment. <laughs> okay. And that's, yeah. Where is the place of responsibility for somebody who did something wrong? Not ours. It's not on us. What if they did it to us? It depends on how you want to live. Do you want to live on the high horse of being right that they were I wrong? Might. It's pretty nice on the horse. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yes. Of course. And you can ride that horse all the way home, you know, like you mm -hmm. can enjoy that. You will be um, by myself. You'll be on the like, horse. <laughs> very lonely. And it'll probably be on fire. <laughs> Running from its own tail, yeah. So, <laughs> the thing is we're humans and we respond to other humans. Mm -hmm. So, if I say something like, in a vulnerable way, I'm really trying my best to make peace within myself. And when I blame you or anyone else, for my experience, for my reactions, there's nowhere to go. I just get worse inside, meaning I get more uncomfortable. So my, so my intention behind taking a walk was to create a space of compassion inside of myself so that I can look into what I need, which is at this point, I need to get closer to my inner world. I need to be more in contact with my body, my subconscious uh, pain, so that I can embrace anything that's come up inside of me. Along the way, I realized that I, I'm actually grateful that we met because um, some things that have bothered me from our interactions have been the most potent learning experiences within me because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to contact them. So that's what I'm working with. It's reconnecting, staying close to my inner child, staying close to my intimate uh, vulnerability with tenderness, with you know my innocence, with meditation, with breath, with physical body awareness. I'm doing whatever I can to stay close to my inner world because that's priority for me. Otherwise, I don't respond well to life because mm -hmm. I'm uncomfortable and I'm not present. And I don't want to live like that. I don't care. If I have had thoughts that I want you to be different or uh, what you said or didn't say was something I would prefer or, or was wrong or right, that may be the case that those thoughts will come up again. But if they do, I know that there's a way that I'm going to find deeper truth and peace just by acknowledging my pain rather than blaming you for it. That was a lot. Oh, my God. It sounds so hard. <laughs> Yeah, well, let's break it down. What am I really doing? I'm letting you know that I'm trying. I'm giving you my vulnerability to say this is not easy. I have my own history that has nothing to do with you. And 
And yet we're here together and I want to share this experience in the present day because I care about you in a, you know, in a, a life situation that you, maybe you're not my blood family, but maybe you are. Um, and that there's a lot, there's a lot here and I'm here to grow period. If I'm not, mm -hmm. if I'm not engaging with what's arising in a healthy way, then I'm just going in loops. You know, I'm, pretty, yeah. I'm just lost. So whatever arises, regardless of how big or small or however right or wrong we think the other person is, if, if I'm struggling even a little bit, that's mine. <laughs> I'm listening to you and I'm like, when does he get to the part of like, don't do it again? <laughs> I know you're not getting there, but... <laughs> The ego, it's like, I feel like thinking of what you're doing, of like acting in the way that you're saying right now or speaking in this way, I feel like ripping of the ego. Yeah, it's dying. Like, I feel like exorcism yeah. of the ego. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Which sounds so hard. <laughs> well, uh, let me ask you this. Who would you be without that thought that they need to never do that again? Like... This is from Byron Katie's yeah. work. You know, this is a very sort of natural process if we want to be free to ask, yeah. like, who are you without that thought? Honestly, that's such a good question because whenever I think about it in that way, I'm like, oh, much better. <laughs> Just better. <laughs> yeah. Like that. Yeah. So can you see any reason to keep looping on that thought that doesn't cause you stress? No. No, but the thing that I'm struggling with yeah. is like, where do we communicate how somebody's actions affected us in a way that we're asking them to act differently? We don't at all. If you are going to do that, then you will be disappointed. I would suggest... But don't you think that you can ask people that you're in close relationship to be aware of what they do because that brings up X or Y in you. And you don't want to feel that stuff. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. You're like, cop out. <laughs> now, I'm not suggesting that you shouldn't communicate. For mm -hmm. example, if I say, I notice that every time when you come home uh, and you slam the front door, my nervous system gets super like re like super tight for example mm -hmm. um and i have a hard time falling back asleep mm -hmm. end of story okay so you do mention it in a way i can mention it and then i can also say and i am aware that when i was younger my little brother would mm -hmm. as soon as i would fall asleep he hated when i fall asleep before him so he'd always slam his plastic baseball bat on my bed <laughs> right when I was falling asleep, just so he didn't have to go to bed you know, alone. And so it was a trauma for me that I haven't been able to understand, but mm -hmm. it's actually coming up mm -hmm. from this experience that I'm having with the door closing. Okay, I understand. So you do mention the correlation of how you're feeling with their actions. But be very careful. Exactly, not blaming them for how you feel exactly but exactly um showing to them explaining to them that this is how you feel when this or this happens it's such a slippery slope because i see your ego is like hey, oh, yes <laughs> right there yeah i'm like yes thank god all i'll say, all i will say all i will say is just watch and see if it works mm. Mm. If it plays out the way you really hope it would, I, I will be absolutely surprised and, and, and mm -hmm. celebrate it. Mm -hmm. um, because people feel energy. People will feel your subconscious poke. <laughs> and they're going to come back and say, well, then buy some earplugs. You see, they yeah. will—they will not say that if you're—they will not say that if you're trying to reveal rather than convince. 
If you're trying to reveal the fact that yeah. it's deep and it's, tra it's, it's trauma for me that I'm working with and maybe I should see mm -hmm. someone about it. I'm trying to do this practice that Christopher reminded me of, which is an inner child meditation on giving them exactly what they need, taking them out of the room. I'm going to give my little guy a place where he can sleep without having the fear that the bat is going to be hitting on the bed. I'm totally making that up. My brother would never, he'd never <laughs> done that. But I'm just, you know, scenarios yeah. that will be part of your meditation on where is this coming from? How old was I the first time that I felt mm -hmm. that level of, <gasps> you know, yeah. or, or that level of ah, frustration, anger, defeat, all the things that start establishing as patterned behavioral sort of personality mm -hmm. traits, they start <laughs> so far back. Yeah. And if we can, like anything, address the root, then we really can affect the yeah. fruit. And I love that. Reveal rather than blame. Conv convince. convince. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, if, I mean, this is devastating to the ego. Just absolutely devastating mm -hmm. that everyone is my guru. Yeah. And I would be honored to share my process with you, guru. I would be honored to open and reveal. This concept of guru is so normal for me because I grew up with one that I trusted absolutely and mm. there's never been any controversy or disputes or abuse of power or anything of the sort so what I mean by guru is not that there's some guy or some lady who has some authority what I mean is that I am receptive to guru to remove the darkness mm. I'm receptive to my shadows being illuminated with consciousness and that comes by others acting in exactly the way they are <laughs> just exactly like that yeah and so if i go around trying to control and sh suppress everyone else's behavior i'll never illuminate yeah it might take me lifetimes or i can take my hands off of this idea that i can control and push and nudge everybody yeah. to be in according to how i become more comfortable okay. fascinating yeah I want to ask you, <laughs> yeah, I need like 10 deep breaths right now. <laughs> yes. I want to ask you um, about like a different aspect of this because I find that maybe because I, I just kind of clicked in my mind, maybe because I so disliked not when people weren't honest with me. For me, it's very easy to be honest and straightforward about yes. things. But I find that, you know what? I'm not even going to say that because I also have that in myself. Mm. Like sometimes that I don't say how I feel or how something has made me feel. Yeah. With um, and I want to respond to that. Yeah. Culturally, we are not taught how to express our truth without putting a demand, a thinly veiled demand mm. underneath it, behind it. Uh, yeah. which will trigger the other person to feel used and abused in a sense that you're projecting. That's abuse, you know, like in a way, like you're abusing your role as a friend and close proximity. I'm taking advantage of the opportunity to put stuff out there on top of you. That's not, it's not how it is. You see, when I am triggered by someone else's behavior, it's because it's in me, not because they put it on the negative energy on me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always mine. If I'm triggered, it's mine. Yes. Basically, yes. <laughs> if yes. I'm triggered in any way, if I'm struggling or suffering, I have something to bring into awareness. Now, now I'll give you an example. If I said to you, um, you're, you're, uh, gosh, this is tricky. Your eyes are way too blue. <laughs> do you like the color of your eyes? I do. So how does it feel when I say your eyes are way too blue? Funny. It's funny, right? <laughs> yeah. It's funny because it is not in you mm. that you don't like your eyes. Mm -hmm. Okay? Water off yeah. a duck's back mm -hmm. because it's not yeah. yours. Yeah, yeah. It's a very offensive thing to say about someone's eyes. It's the window to their soul. I'm targeting the most sacred, connecting mm -hmm. sense of our being. And yeah. how'd you feel? It's funny, water <laughs> off a duck's back. Because you don't have that previously existing belief inside of you. Now, if I said something else that was actually existing and you felt like 
or I did something mm -hmm. that triggered you, guess what? That's mine. Yes, and that distinction that it's yes. not really what that person said or did, it's how I relate to it or not. Yes. Do I do I resonate with it and kind of have yes. it as my identity or Already, not? Already, exactly. As a subconscious or pre-existing yeah. belief or... A, that determines our response. Exactly. Yeah. That's all I mean by it's ours. Yeah. I kind of wanted to, to ask you about something a little bit different, like the fear of speaking out. Okay. Because I feel that so many of us, you know what? I think it's all of us in different situations, in front yeah, of different people, for sure. on different levels, um, will stop ourselves from expressing ourselves. And yeah. maybe it is because in the past, we have expressed ourselves in a way that is blaming or, exactly. and then the response that we got made us fear speaking out. Perfect, you just okay. nailed it right there. Mm -hmm. Learning the skill of expressing our truth in an effective way is huge to being able to speak out in a way that you don't have to be afraid mm -hmm. because you're not asking or demanding on the other person, which sets us up for a reaction, a recoil. Yeah. So if I say, let's say, what's an example you can think of where, that I would need to speak up about or that you would think is important to speak up about, to speak out or whatever you said, you know, like. Like if I did something to you? Or just in general, yeah. Like, was there something let's, in mind? Let's take to the extreme, like somebody cheating on you. Okay. So, someone's cheated on me, right? And I feel, what? I feel, well, so it'll be different for everybody. Yeah. Uh, for someone. You know what? Yeah. Maybe it's better to take it to the small things because the extreme, it's obvious that you should say something. Um, yes, but I think let's start with the big one. Okay. Just so we can see what happens. Okay. So if someone's cheated on me, whoa, that's a signal that they are not interested in me as I would like them or to be. Or that's the interpretation of it. Yes, yeah, my, exactly. That's a, yeah. that's a, that's a signal to me, mm -hmm. not necessarily from them, but it's a, for me, it's a signal that they're not interested or they don't value me enough to stay with me, for example. Or that so I'm not enough. I'm not enough. Yeah. I'm not lovable enough. Yeah. I'm not respectable enough. I'm not attractive enough. I'm not interesting, funny, uh, talented, mm -hmm. intelligent enough. All those things could come up mm -hmm. under the sentence for me, I'm not lovable. But I, this is going to be really hard now, but I already have those beliefs that I'm not lovable, mm -hmm. that I'm not respectable, that I'm not uh, whatever it is. So their action was probably, this is going to be really hard Don't to hear. Don't say attracted by the subconscious. <laughs> I'm so say. sorry. <laughs> I, I kind of auditioned them about <laughs> five, ten years ago. Wow. When I got involved with them, all these hormones were triggered inside of me because I could sense the potential that they could play a, a perfect role for me. So does that mean that we should question our choices no. or embrace them? Um, <laughs> you know what I so mean? So life is happening for us to experience it. Like, should we choose another partner than the one that we want? Um, you know what I mean? We're going to choose based on what we need. And we can override feelings and we can shut down attractions and everything like that. And it'll be very appropriate to be mindful and discerning. But that brings up its own issues. It, yeah, it's a dance. It's, a, <laughs> it's like a dance of choosing when and how much and how little to trust attraction. There's no easy answer to this. This conversation is like... If you want... If like, you want this is hard work, this spiritual development. <laughs> I know. You know, my teacher would say you can... is bliss, isn't it? Yeah, it Isn't is. Isn't that what they say? Totally. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> Dang it. But one of my teachers would say, um, you, can, uh, you can illuminate yourself through um, 40 days on a mountain or three failed relationships. Mm. <laughs> so, your choice. <laughs> Do you reel it all back in and go deep into introspective practices and investigate what's here, what's under the surface, what's beneath it, who am I? Or... 
Do you let your subconscious intelligence guide you to be attracted to those who will bring your need to the surface? Doesn't matter. You can choose either one, but if it's sincere, you're still going to end up in the same place. And then I would guess that you would have to be in a relationship where you're willing to do the spiritual work together. No. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Unfortunately not. That would be nice. Mm. That would be ideal. That would be special. Uh, yeah, I guess maybe you wouldn't have to, but it would be much nicer. Well, it depends. It depends on what you need. Because if your partner laughs at you when you say, like, this is reminding me of uh -huh. my childhood, you know, like, then... <laughs> then you have some real work to do. <laughs> because you attracted yeah. someone who disrespects you so much mm. that it reminds you of when you were in fourth grade and your whatever mm. person in your life started to dismiss what you felt valuable. And that's what's bringing you closer to divine consciousness. That will take some serious spiritual work. What else we got going on? <laughs> well, so much. <laughs> Well, if you're watching this podcast, at least you're somewhat interested. So yeah. I'm only suggesting these as potentials, not to say that we should hold ourselves to some unrealistic ideal. Mm -hmm. We need to start from where we are. And if that means being really clear that I'm not able to be in a relationship right now, I'm not even able to see someone else as my teacher. I need to be in my own space. I need to find my own inner world. Perfect. You know, don't let any attractions guide you towards intimate, codependent interactions so that you can spend time there. And if you want to, let someone in, but just know that if it's based on a real energetic attraction, it will be, or not, or whatever, it doesn't matter. If you bring them into your life, it's going to be perfect. <laughs> because it will bring you closer if you're willing. <laughs> yeah, it's not so simple as... Find the right person. Mm. It's just literally always, always aligning for your ultimate benefit. Amen to that. It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> if we're interested, you know, yeah. or, or, or we can just enjoy being right <laughs> for a little by while. By yourself. By ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> in our little box, <laughs> in a little eco echo chamber. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's try let's try the alternative to be honest mm. to do the best we think and feel in the moment in terms of expressing in terms of sharing our truth in terms of letting go of the blame games and, and re-empower ourselves like really feel i am here to wake up to the magnificence of my innate being that's what it's about everything is conspiring to reflect what i need everything mm. And if I'm open and I'm looking around at the people and every action that's observable as an opportunity to grow, whether that's someone lying to me or cheating on me or, or leaving or becoming really clingy or dismissing my truth, my liberation depends on accepting that fact in the moment. Not that I have to agree. It's not about that. But to allow what's arising to arise. Mm -hmm. And then I can work with it in a healthy way. Let go of the blame game. We're all one. The ocean has waves, but it's still just the ocean. Each one of us happens to have a little different shape to our, our wave, but we're just the ocean showing itself in different forms. Yeah. So there's nothing to be afraid of. There's no one that you have to reject or push away per se. Of course, if someone's throwing a punch at you, you know, really physically, you know, move out of the way. You know, mm -hmm. let it, it's okay. You know, let it go by. But if you let it go by and then take a sucker punch at the back, mm -hmm. That was from our own mm. stuff, you know. Let it go by, maybe put them in a position so they can't hurt themselves or others mm -hmm. in a compassionate way. Yeah. You know, that's a really extreme example I'm saying because someone watching this, they're going to say, well, what if I'm getting beaten? Well, then move out of the way. You have yeah. a self-preservation mechanism that's something we should never deny. Mm -hmm. But it gets very confusing when it's mixed in with egoic patterning yeah. you know so trying to gain confidence to know that we are the one we've been waiting for we are all 
of that magnificence that we hope the other person will bring or whatever mm. it is, you know, or the practice will bring. Yeah. Um, we're here to love each other. And when we can get out of the way, we can recognize the divine in everything. And that's our gift for each other is to shine back. <laughs> Little kitties playing there, <laughs> testing each other. Um, just to circle back around mm -hmm. to the per to the family, the, the, yeah. the close family members. Um, they may not. So for in my case, when I think of family and how do we relate to them, um, they may not speak the same language as you. So it may not be possible for you to um, relate in a way that you hoped in these regards, but you can appeal to their, to their humanity, you know, and say, look, I love you. I have been having a really hard time knowing how to talk to you about these things that are important to me. Um, this has been something that I've been struggling with for a while, and I think I've been not very nice to you because I don't, I haven't felt brave enough to say it or I haven't known how to say it because um, I'm afraid of what might happen. And, and what happens in the past is in the past, but it still lives in me as fear. So I'm going to do my best to let you into my experience. If you're interested, um, we can sit together and I can share with you and then you can share how you feel if you want to, but there's no pressure. Does that sound interesting to you? You can record that, type it out, you know, yeah. practice it a few times. I'm not yeah. suggesting that's going to work for, for people, but to appeal to their humanity, to say, look, I'm trying. Mm -hmm. I know it hasn't been working. I know that we're not connecting the way we should or could, I should say. And those moments of reaching out to them will, if they're not on drugs or, you know, if they're not... Um, so or maybe psychologically or intellectually disabled or something, you know, that might in interfere, then they're going to feel something. They're going to be like, okay, let's pay attention for a moment. There's someone really putting themselves out there. Yeah, and they're trying. <laughs> exactly. And that's all that they need to see usually is that someone else is trying to bridge the gap, doing their best and letting go of the blame game. We're adults here. Yeah, and I think breathing deeply in that conversation because it's like, Every sentence, every word that comes out of the mouth, noticing and checking, am I blaming? Am I in some way trying to convince them? Well said. Learning. <laughs> that was brilliant, yes. We're learning. <laughs> We're all learning. And you know, there's nothing wrong with blaming. As long as you put it out there as, wow, I realize I'm really blaming you right now for my mm -hmm. pain. It's not something I'm proud of. Mm. I don't think it's going to work out well if I continue blaming you. Yeah. It's okay, but I just am aware that it's not what I want to be doing. Yeah. You know, so. Reveal rather than convince. This is the power. She's in it. She's so in it. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. We got so, this. Yeah. Is there like a little glimmer of hope? I mean, you, you did... You did uh, kind of close it out really nicely, mm -hmm. saying that it's for our growth and that we have everything inside of us that yeah. we're looking for. Yeah. You know, every breath that we take is another opportunity to show up. And in the Yoga Sutras, it says life has but one purpose, which is to experience life. And if we're not experiencing it because we're arguing with it, or projecting it onto someone else, then we're just maybe not getting the most out of it. So let's take every breath as a new opportunity to experience life as it is. And we'll respond with the best of our ability to each situation. And the more honest and the more present we can be, the greater peace we'll have in the journey. So this is really all we're doing, is learning yeah. to live and experience life as peacefully as we can. Yeah, beautiful. Christopher, I'll ask you this question. Yes. Fifth time. <laughs> what are you curious about right now? Uh, I'm curious about the human potential that is my own life that I'm here to evolve into and how we can share that with one another. 
Beautiful. So I'll just say for anybody listening who's been here until this point, let us know how this practice has been for you. Uh, I'm sure Christopher is happy to take any questions or any insights that you had. Uh, if you need any help with this, get in touch. Get in touch. Yeah. A few messages um, about what's going on. I'm happy to share any little tidbits. And at the end of the day, it's about revealing. So just remember that. Just reveal what's true for you. Sit back without demands on other people. And you will find that the other human being may respond uh, in a surprising way. Beautiful. Yeah. Christopher, thank you so much. Thank you. It's a pleasure. All mine. Now, after this time to nurture your mind and your spirit, we invite you to take a moment to consider others. A kind wish might come to mind. Know that what we learn becomes more valuable when we apply it and share it with others. So share this episode on Instagram stories, tag Yandara and I, or share with a loved one so that more people can benefit from it. Our hope is that the search will lead you home to who you already are to what was always there. We'll be back next week with more inspiration, honest conversation, and insight into the energetic world around us. Thank you for listening and watching.